Excel unit, um, the ed editorial unit that made um, this such a brilliant innovation. I sincerely believe that this is not just a um, just one of those things that just come up by by the you know the the mind of a man. I sincerely believe that this is one of the things God wants, you know, is trying to put together. As I was just trying to upload this stuff on WhatsApp this evening, as I was typing, I don't know how my aunt typed that this is not just a review, it is an activation. Because I sincerely believe that um, this is more than human, human worship. This is more than human announcement. This is an activation that God wanted to, you know, to do for us. Because many would, at the end of all of this review, you would begin to see a conception in men begin to be bettered out. You begin to see men who are not even who have not conceived anything. They will begin to conceive. There are ideas that are just lying fallow. That this, as you hear men review portions of this book and. This continues with time. Then you begin to see new, new things that you never, ideas that you never knew were buried in your spirit. We begin to pop out by the energy of the spirits. I so much believe that. So thank you for, um, very much, um, the editorial unit, for making this uh, a reality. Uh, my assignment is simple within the short time that I have um, to talk about two things, how this book came uh, to reality, and then review the chapter one of it, how uh, how I picked form. Okay, um, now, Daddy we ask, can I just pray? I know we've prayed, but let me pray. Daddy we ask that even as we go in this journey, you will help us speak your mind to us in the name of Jesus. For as many who are listening now and will listen to this later, that you will ask that you will cause the eye of their understanding to be opened in the name of Jesus. That you will ask that you will dig that well from within men, even as they listen in the name of Jesus. And let there be an activation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I was just praying, so sorry, I'm sounding spiritual because that is who I am and that is who we are. I just, as I shut my eyes, I just saw, a, you know, a vision. I just saw that, uh, I just saw a, a man with an hammer digging a well. And as he was digging those well, there were treasures resident in those well. And they were coming for, that was why I made that prayer that God will dig, God, I believe this review will dig out something in you. I know that there are many people listening to me and will still listen to this. Songs are inside you that should bless nation. There are chants inside you that should bless nation. There are writings from your from your hand that should bless nation. There are blog that should there are blog that should come out from your loins. Are you saying that there are books that should be written? There are songs that should be transported from heaven. That song. Those songs have been locked up in heaven for a very long time, waiting for who will bring it. But you're uh, not being diligent enough, not paying attention, not having an understanding of what God is doing, has allowed those songs to stay in the realm of the spirit. And the only thing you know to do is that the songs of men is now your motivation. And there should be a motivation that should come from your loin to a generation, but it has no comfort. So this review, as it goes on, from now till next month, and further, we will open up those in your spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, not a look barrow. Everyone who is in this meeting, I would like us to kindly mute our mics. The host can mute. Kindly mute yourself. And mute them. Host, also help us with that. Thank you so much. You can go okay. ahead, sir. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, so sorry for that interruption. All right, so I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Okay, so um, very quickly, I want to um talk about uh how the book came uh what better the book okay i finished from 
School of Nurse in Oshogo, and uh, a number of people that were part of that um, school are here. Uh, and in fact, I think the, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the editorial coordinator of FCN Southwest on Sweden um, finished from that same school. And I think we did a little things together before uh, I left school. Okay, so um, that book, I, I, you know, we just came to school naive. We don't really know much about uh, what God was doing. We only knew that we got to know God and we we're following him. But I could remember when my work with God started, I, I never knew what God was doing. I was just following him. And I was just following him just as he called us. And I, I remember that he, I was, normally it's my culture, I would just stay at times, just stay alone, just be receiving ideas, be conceiving you know, certain level of you know, ideas in my heart. And I just sat down that day, I think probably after a prayer or a devotion or something like that. And I just began to see God, he told me to, you know, held, I held on to a book, and a pen, then I begin to write table of content. <laughs> it was surprising. That was 20, um, 2014. And God began to say, there are certain things you will, I will take you through. There are certain things you have gone through. There are some that I will still take you through that must be documented for certain people to hear. Because the story of every man, the story of every man, someone should hear that story. The Bible is full of stories, and archive is a compendium of stories of men that God intentionally documented so that a generation will read those books and be motivated. Are you saying that? So God just told me, okay, you will write a book, and the name of the book, did I, did I even get the name? Okay, yeah, he told me the name. The Journey, Nursing School, a Spiritual Institution. I, didn't, I was in 200 level. I've not even finished nursing school. I just passed six months. I don't know anything. But God, the God who sees future, who knows what he is doing, you might conceive a thing in 100 level and the thing will play out where, even when you are out of school. It might be playing out when you are giving birth to your firstborn. The, the goal is conceived. Do you know how long it took Joseph? He conceived while he was 17. 17. And the actualization of the conception was better at age 30. But that means if it is God that gave the idea, watch out, I would, he would ensure that it happens. So that's the time, 2014, I just sat down, then I began to write a table of content. Then I began to put it, um, I picked the form. I, just, I intentionally used it just as it, um, those things were. That time, I picked the form, uh, presumption, my first year when class started. Then I named, you know, I just tagged it that way. Don't forget, I was in 200 level, school on 200 level. And I don't know how 300 level will look like. And I don't know how after school will look like. But I wrote the table of content to the level where I was at that time. Just as God was speaking to my, communicating to my spirit. So I left it there and continued seeking God, continued learning the things of the spirit. Then after that time, I, I think when I got to 300 level again, I don't know how my way meandered across that book again. I held it and I updated the table of contents. Don't forget, I've not written anything. I don't even know where to start. I don't know how to start. I have not written a book before. I, I'm not. The only book I know to write is the one they dictate for us in class. Those notes, those long, long notes. Those are the ones I know how to write. I don't know how to write a book. But God, who understand what he was doing, was just telling me, write down the table of content. So I wrote that. That was 2014, don't forget. Now, till I left nursing school, after I left, I went to work in Lagos for a year before I went to school of psychiatric nursing in Arrow. And it was in Arrow. In fact, do you know what? The surprising thing is, the very book where I wrote all of those stuff, did I misplace it? Okay, I did not misplace it. I think I misplaced it. I could not find it on time. So it is not, this is how you will know that it is God that told you or that put that conception in your, in your bowel. 
is that it can be reproduced again. This was not what was formed. I did not form it. Even though I did, I could not find that book. When I held onto the, my pen again and my book, the table of content just as it came, as I received it, the thing began to drop again. I began to arrange it and align it. It was later, I think months later, I now found the book. Then I was now compared, like, what kind of God is this? And then I you know put up all of that again and added it up and the table of content was now complete. In fact, the table of content was even actually more than that. There were other portion of the journey that I had to remove and cut out. Okay, so after that um, time, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm just trying to tell you how, because this is a message for someone, because I don't know, I just believe that this is an activation for many people that will be listening to this. So after that time, I, I that was, okay, I had gone back to start working in Ife. So it was when I was in Ife, that was when I started the book. That was 20, I go back to Ife 2020. So 2021, that was when I started writing the book. So something that was conceived 2014, I started putting pen on paper 2021. Now, the question I was asking myself, how was I able to remember event of 20, 2011? I was wondering, I finished secondary school 2011. And that was when I started, you know, the, the chapter one, that is when chapter one was conceived. Are you seeing, are you seeing the wisdom of God? 2021, that is 10 years, if I'm correct, 2021, I mean, 2011 to 2021, that's 10 years. So how was I able to remember all that happened? How? How? It, it can only be God. So then I started writing. I was a little bit lazy. Uh, yeah, let me use that because it takes diligence to, to put pen on paper and write. It takes diligence to compose, to sit down and compose a song. That's the truth. It takes diligence to write a blog. It takes diligence to write an article. It's not easy. Your mind can be composing everything. Put it on paper. Let us see you sit down and then write it. That's when we know, you know diligence. So then I began to write. I began to write. It took a while. I, I know God, was, God will remind me again, again and again. And I think one of the things that now gave that drive. I think I started writing at some point. I would leave it for, for months. I don't even touch the book again. Then I now had to tell someone to make a design of a to make a design of the book of the paper. And then I just told him, uh, design something. I'm saying something in my spirit, try and make it up and you know, come up with a design. And then he worked on it. When he sent it to me, I said, Yes, this is it. This is it. So when I saw that book, in fact, when I posted the book online that be you no know, anticipate for this book. I've not wrote, I've not written half of the book, but I know doing that it it motivated something in me. It activated you know, that drive that people are waiting for this book. A generation is waiting to read the portion of this book. Then that you no know, that drive begin to come. That drive begin to come. Then I begin to write. I would, and you know those times it was a very thick moment. It is not a story to share now. A very thick moment because there were a lot of things happening. And that time there was a number of commitment in FCN from work to meeting, from meeting to schools. And the minimal time I have is, I don't even know if I have time. Oh, yeah. Because if I do seven days duty, the remaining seven days to travel around to Shaki or Shogo Ibadan, and I'm back again to go and resume duty. So what time exactly do I have to write? But thank God for those you know, upgrades, Times that I cut out. I, in fact, I remember a time when I took the book where I was writing it, took it to night duty. So when I'm done with medication, I would you know, quickly write on top. And uh, things begin to pile up, God begin to. So that was how the book came, really. That was how the book came. And that was how we got to where. If I had to remove some portion while writing, because I, I got that. Oh, oh. <laughs> but you don't get, let me write. <laughs> we we'll had it up in some other area. We we'll use the amount to communicate the remaining. And this was how the volume one of this book actually came. Can I quickly tell you, because by God's special grace, the volume two is cooking. And I can assure you it will be a blessing, really, to be a blessing. We are not writing book to make money. Mm -mm, mm -mm. We, we know one thing for sure, that 
uh, if you want to, I think I said that in my in this book. If you want to understand, if you want to understand, if you want to write into your own encounter, you must read and study the encounter of another man. Yeah. And if you want to know how to show one, let me tell you what the Bible is for. One of the things the Bible offers us, the Bible helps a man. When you read it, you it teaches you how God worked with men. And as you read that book and understand how God worked with men, then you'll be able to teach other men how to work with God. If you don't have an understanding of that, you, it, you can't mentor a generation. You can't become a father. A father is not a title. He's an office. A mentor is not a title. He's an office. So having this understanding, it, 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 will, it will help you know that what you are going through is not a waste. Mm, it's not a waste. So that singular thing that you felt you went through, one singular article will be what we transport it into nations. Just put it, write an article, put it, drop it somewhere, and someone will read and be motivated and be like, I read your article, and this was what it did to me. That is the power of you know, documenting and writing books. I'm, I'm someone who write, I learned that a very long time when I started my work with God. I want to give this encouragement to someone as I go very briefly to talk about the chapter one. And, and what I would say is that, please do, um, cultivate the act of documentation. Hmm. Now, let me tell you how chapter two came. The chapter two, I've not even started writing. I never knew what God was doing. So that's why I would tell you, please cultivate the art of documentation. You think you are doing quiet time in the morning and it's like, eh, just let me just read it. And then you read, for God so love the word. And he gave you only the God's son. And you read it. I'm like, oh, thank you, Father. Help me to love your Jesus. Help me to, and you just be and disappear. No, sir. What did God say to you in that place? Don't put it in your head. Put it in the book. Write it in the book. Write it in the book. You know what I'm, I'm emphasizing? It, write it in the book. Even God, the God, the one you claim you are serving, is documenting in heaven. How much more you? You are bigger than documentation. Write down. God is writing down things. There are two books in heaven currently. Go and read the book of Revelation. There is one called the book, and there is another called the books. I don't want to tell you, the, I don't want to bore you with the difference between the two, but really God documents things. God is writing in heaven. I know you will read again in the book of um, Esther, there's something called the book of remembrance. God has that book. All of what you are doing is being documented. So when God wants to check your archive, oh, how did he do in nursing school? Okay, he did this. And God will use those things to, 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 you know, to pay you, to pay you back. So please cultivate the act of documenting. Don't just, don't do quiet time and think and uh, the voice of God. No, 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 write it down. It makes sense. It doesn't make sense. Write it down. You add God is speaking to you, write it down. You went to a meeting, write it down. Yeah, this is, this is how you do it. I can't count the number of jotters I have. And you know what? While I was relocating, I, the, the, the only thing I did, even I don't even, I don't even, I don't carry many. I carried all of my jotters, all of my jotters. Because I know they are weapons for my continuity. They are weapons for my consistency. So I mean, I'm, 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 I'm encouraging someone who you know, threw away their jotters, just think they don't, they don't cultivate the habit of writing. Please begin to write. Because one way God will lead you, okay. what you wrote in the administration of social, so go and pick it up. And that will be your answer for that day. So please cultivate the art of writing. Now, I want to quickly share it with you how volume two came. When I've not even written at all, volume two of this book. I, I was in Peru. And I remember a day when God began to God told me that he wanted to teach me a few things. And then I carried my Bible, carried my daughter. And um, that place, you know, he, he, he started teaching me. He, started, he just told me, write a table of content. Then I wrote it down, blah, blah, blah. I, I listed everything as it were coming to my spirit. And then I begin to write. What it taught me that day lasted for one month. I kept studying every day for one month. And in fact, it was, like I know a few, you know, a numerous portion of scriptures. And I keep writing and writing. I don't know, 
Yeah. Not, the writing was not that I'm planning to go and teach you somewhere. Or, and there's somebody that will come and ask me, okay, you ready to study this, come and teach me. I was just writing as they were coming to my, as he was teaching me, I was documenting them. I never knew, in fact, I documented the book. As I finished the jota, I just drop it somewhere and pick another new jota. When God began, when I finished this book, and I was, I don't know what came to me, God said, you know, that jota, that topic that I taught you, that's those years. That is your volume two. I said, ah, God, is this how you work? And that was volume two. Every other thing would be additional. I was like, oh my God. Now, how do you think such a, a, a work, a documentary will not be a blessing to people? Because these are not formulations. They are, they are things that came from the depth of revelation. So please, I'm encouraging someone again cultivate the art of documentation and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So that was how um, the book came, really, because I believe many of you songs are in your bowels that we must hear. Yeah, songs are in your bowels that we must hear. And we need to hear it, please. We need to hear it. We need to hear it. We need to hear it. Songs are in your bowels that we need to hear. Yeah, don't, don't, don't just, don't sing only in the bathroom. Mm, don't sing only in the bathroom. Let what you receive. In fact, can I shock you? You can. I'm just saying this randomly because these are things I have experienced a number of times. You can. You see, any when the Bible, you know the word. There is a name. God is called. It's called omnipresent. That means it's everywhere. It can be found everywhere. The secret of encounter with anything that would change the world would always come when you are alone. Now, being alone is not just only in your room. It is not um, a specific location dependent. The secret is you being alone. In fact, do you know you can be in a meeting just like FCN Southwest Zone, Zone Alumni Reunion Conference, and you will be alone in that conference. My God. Very possible. In that place where you isolate yourself, there are 5,000 people there, but you know you are isolated. And yet God will come and meet you because you are alone. If you are, you still have that mindset, you are in the crowd, you will be exempted. God will not near you. But when you isolate yourself, God will show you. And everybody with this will not see what you are seeing. Everybody will not experience what you are experiencing. Why? This is how God meets with men. There were certain things that had to come in the bathroom. Mm, in the bathroom. Because you have created an atmosphere that you carry everywhere. In the toilet, at, I can remember Bro Steve tell us, the biggest place where he receive revelation and pray is in the toilet. As he's sitting on that closet, putting his, you know, his head at the back of the, uh, what's this thing that, that, you know, that, that accommodates the water? Uh -huh. That is where he receives his revelation. If I, if, in fact, even if I would shock you and surprise you, the mandate that controls my life, I receive it in the bathroom. I carry the bowl of water to pour, and that was it. That was how I saw it. And that is what is driving my life till date. But you know, you know what? I said that in the bathroom. So don't just think it will only happen in the bathroom. If you don't do anything before you enter the bathroom, you will not see anything. Everything will be black. You know, some people will be like, ah, I've seen some people say, "Why do you? See, how do you people see vision? You know, how do you see vision? Like, I always see that you will close your eyes. When you don't close your eyes, you say, I saw. Okay, close your eyes. Everything will be black. Yeah. You someone who is not used to opening Bible and want to see vision. Oh, my God. You will see nonsense. That's the truth. But if you are used, have you not read 2 Corinthians? The Bible says, as we behold we become if you are not beholding yeah, the Bible, man of God. you can't become you can't even see vision any vision you see when you have not been seeing the word of God not lie in fact that's okay. Thank you. Thank you much. let me let me go to the book now yeah. Holy Spirit okay now so the book started with I think the form and every one of us have stories of uh, how we wanted, you know, we have plans, you know, I remember those times. And the funniest thing about me is I actually do not have plan of doing medicine. When everybody used to talk, I want to become a doctor. 
me I, I know I, I don't say such a thing that I want to I, I those I don't it doesn't occur to me that I want to become a doctor no no I don't even know what I wanted to become <laughs> It's strange. I don't know what I wanted to become, but I shall know I will be great. I will be fine. Okay? Maybe the best I, things I know how to do while I was coming up was that I know how to do certain things without being taught. You know, from, from nursery school, I've been playing drums. Nursery, nursery into primary school. I would just, when I get there, I would, I would just be the one to do it. And I, it's not that I was pretty taught, you know, some of those things. When they are doing dancing competition, in my secondary school, I was the one that coordinated all the caro, all the validity service dance company. I was thinking maybe I'll just be going and become a dancer and be making big money. I don't know. I'll be playing drums about. And the best is all of those gifts, everything I did, I spent everything in shop. There was no opportunity to you know, move out and go and do all of that. I think the only time I think I danced outside was when I danced in the burial ceremony of my pastor. <laughs> And I dance and dance and you know people were spraying me money like say I'll be the only dancer. But now we don't know how to dance again. God is our strength in Jesus' name. Okay, so every one of us we have what we want to do. But I think when I did the first jump, I picked. I know I just wanted to do physiotherapy or to do pharmacy. But uh, jam, you know, just jam me like that. You know, you know ah, how many of you has jam jam here? <laughs> The jamming of jam is not a smart thing. Oh, Jesus. You know, when you have read, you have prepared, so much prepared. And at the end of the day, you just observe that, uh, ah, Stasera, Stas is, 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 she's, 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 she felt that jamming. <laughs> yeah, it was a serious jamming, you know. At the end of the jam, post jam, now posted some people to nursing school. They don't want to be posted, but they did, you know. Post jam did their posting. Like you know that they do posting in nursing school. Ah, thank you, Jesus. And you know, while all of this was happening, you will never know the wisdom of God was planning something out. Sincerely, for me, I knew it was the wisdom of God that coordinated all of those activities. I tell you, I was telling you that while all of this was happening, my I don't I was not born again those times, but I feared God. Now, I have a level of fear of God. We don't, you know, we, we, are, we, we were brought up to go to VG, you know, and fast on Sunday, even though it was on that strike because we were counting, hey, 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 we're done. Ah, oh, Lou, I go a slow beginning of all year. And 11 p.m., I mean, 11 a.m., then when it is 12 on dot, Jesus, the way we rush to go and carry the food is like, are you really fasting? But thank God for all of those training they helped us as we are coming up in, you know, in Christ. So, and all of that led to, you know, I knew it was God that was just planning this thing. He was working it out. I don't have a plan. I don't know how to hear God, whether this is right or this is not right. But the intelligence of God, who knew what he wanted for me, began to, you know, pick my father as a subset that would drive me into, into destiny. And that man just went to pick for me. Me, I just wanted to go to where you. I just wanted that liberty. I'm looking for it because I remember my dad when I used to play talking drums in church. I mean, please, can you help us mute Mr. Papa. Williams? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. So thank you very much. So um, what was I saying? So my dad, you know, God just used my dad to walk around um, how I picked, how he went. In fact, it was when I went to pick the form. I don't even write anything. I don't write. I, he picked the form and he went to submit. The only thing I knew, I went to write an exam. I remember I picked two forms. Many don't know. I picked, I did OETHC, um, IFE. Nothing exam, then I pick, he picked Oi Oshobo also. Because God actually do not want me to come to um, OETAC. He's not, his plan is not to start life there, but I will still have a role to play there. So I, that one, in fact, I did the exam I was expecting to pass. The cutoff was 60, I think, either 60 or 64. And I scored 48. Mm -hmm. I was like, me? Are you for real? I, I, oh God, I almost cried. Because in my mind, I felt I had passed. But I did not pass because God was working things out. 
when I went to do Oshogo exam in the then Oshogen, the Oshogo exam, what's the name of this school? Fakunle, yeah, Fakunle. I, David Gani, are you for real? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I did Oshogo. When I saw the crowd, I was like, I will fail. You know, you know that word? Ah, this crowd, the crowd in OATX was more up to that. I failed. <laughs> now look at Oshogo. They are close to 3,000 or more than that. Forget, I can't pass. I can't, I can't pass. And I just went to write the exam. When I saw the exam, I was like, ah, who said this mathematics? Who put this physics? Everything was not looking like uh, Arabic. I just pick up the answer and disappeared. And to my surprise, because it was the, when the intelligence of God is working something out, you just step out of the way. It is not about how well you have read. See, let me tell you what the impute of God causes upon a man's effort. At that instant, it will not be an, a result of your input because your output will be greater than your input. Yeah, I know you read for that exam, but when God shows up, hmm, you will know. I did me, no be me right now. You will know because God is the one working things out. Are you saying that? So this was how uh, this is not this is this was how everything actually happened around my picking form. So he picked the form, the God was God was just working. When I passed, you know, the umbu me, you know, saying me, they carried me to go and write exam. They carried me to go and do um uh do what is it called now interview. I remember I was good the, they were they were using me to laugh because they even wanted to, I did not hear my name when they called my name for interview. <laughs> funny, funny instances. <laughs> The rain was falling. I was standing somewhere. I did not remember. I did. I just was like, everybody had finished interview. Me, I was running. I was hiding under the, you know, the sheet to, to so that rain will not beat me. Everybody has finished interview. I went to meet the secretary. Do you know what the secretary said? For those that don't understand Yoruba, let me say it in The way he said it in Yoruba was, I said, sir, hey, I'm, I'm one of the students I came for interview. I've, they've called everybody. They've not called me. Ah, hello, look where. I said, my name is Kukwana. I did you write me sir. And ah. Number ah, I think we Oh ah, oh, you know what he said? He said he <laughs> ball. I was, you know, a young me. My my eyes was already becoming teary. Like hey, my father, my maker, they carry me from all the way from Ife. And mama is saying to me, I did not know. So you know, I had to walk down to the den camp and some of the principal, and then. You know, we walked down and I, I had to quickly go and call my parents because my dad and the person that brought me, they went to heat. So when they called me down, they quickly arranged how we do the interview and all of that. And then they had to conduct the interview for, I think it was two of us, myself and one other, Elijah. They conducted the interview for us and thank God that was how the interview you know, went. But one of the wisdom I learned from all of that was that God is a planner. God is a planner. I wrote in this book, let me just read this portion at, that the ignorance of a man can obstruct what God is trying to do in his life. On this note, he will shut it off man's consciousness at first and keep working upon the man to be knowledgeable. That means to receive sense. What am I saying here is that when God wants to do certain things in your life and you are not sensible yet, and yet he needed to get that thing done, he would outsource certain people who would play out the prophecy. There was a first time in school of prayer that we were taught, you know, teaching prof what prophecy means because a man is a prophecy. Even people that will play a role in the prophecy, why not even know they are being used? Because even the devil can even play a role in prophecy. Yeah, you will think, it's, you know, he will be afflicting a man. Yeah, God is using him to play a cast in the role for your fulfillment. But the funniest thing is many believers don't know because God intentionally will shut it over our consciousness because if we know, we will corrupt what God wants to do. So God will shut it back. You know, I said it in that book that at times God will take a decision at our back. Yeah, he, he does that very well. He will not inform you at the first and at, the, at, no, at that point. He will take a at your back with certain people. And then when everything is arranging and arranging, well, at that instant, at that level, you are you know, already gathering sense gradually. And then God will show you, and, oh, this is what God was doing. So you think you are just in that choir, in that unit. God, was, God is building something in you. Because if you don't join that choir and you release any song because you have good voice, mm, 
they will listen to it. The only people that will listen to it are your family members. And when they are done, when your family members are done listening to it, okay, 10 minutes more, thank you. When they are done listening to it, that is all. What should transport men, what should move, you no, know, further than all of this, okay? So everywhere we find ourselves, God is doing something. Don't think that um, what God is taking you to, don't think that those gifting, those opportunity to serve in the choir, opportunity that in the drama, opportunity to, you know, to be in the editorial unit. Do you, now, now, I don't know many of us who had been to, I'm just showing us the, the, the grace and the power of writing. Many of us, if, if you have been to Arrow, Mount Zion Christian Faith Assembly of Arrow, you will, all, you will see something that is unique in Arrow, in the chapel. Every portion of the wall was labored with the word of God. Mm. Every portion of that wall was labored with the word of God. I, can't, I cannot imagine what those words did to me. Or there are times when you'll be going through certain things and you will see that and be like, ah, yes, faithful is he that called you. Who also will do it? Somebody will listen to what you are writing. Somebody will see what God told you one day and be motivated. And you know what? Somebody will be demotivated because you did not receive what should come out to them. Yeah. Everybody will not be a writer of book. And everybody will not be a writer of song. But that which is for you, that which should come from your loin, please bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. You are a good speaker. Can you set up a YouTube channel and begin to talk to us about health? And begin to talk to us about wisdom? And begin to talk to us about emotional stability? Can you, can you have a daily, you know, a, what is it called now? Um, there is a platform where people re you know, release these um, short, short words. Can you bring up something from your loins? But you know what? If you don't stay with God, those ideas will not come. And if they don't come, they can't feed the nation. They can't. So I believe God is, God is doing something strong in our hearts. FCN is a place for conception. Is a place for betting destiny. Is a place for betting and creating. You know what? FCN is only a quarry site. A quarry site. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. I don't know how I can say this. FCN is a quarry site. We are God will make you and send you out. You are nobody is dying in FCN. It's a place for making. I tell you, a place for making. So please and please take seriously. And the Bible says, whatsoever your hand find it to do, please do it diligently. Mm, do it diligently. Whatsoever your hand findeth to do, do it diligently. No great man that existed upon the earth till now just appeared. They started doing something small, small, little by little, and come and see. That cake that you think you know how to bake, and you are doing it for your class, and I'm like, I've, I've been tasting cake. I don't know your cake can be this sweet. I have a friend of mine who conceived something at some point, and she shared it with me. And then we felt, wow, this is this is not just human reasoning. Today, that that gift is blessing the nation. I know she's just started, but she's still going far with that. Yeah, let me see if she's still online, so that I won't mention her name. If she's here, I will not mention her name. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, she's not here. You understand? So what am I saying? That God is doing something strong inside us. And um, let us bring out what is for the nation. Somebody must be motivated by what comes from your loins. Don't let the motivation chaos, you know, decadence keep spreading because you are not rising. Someone who has not known God, I, you can't even conceive idea. That's the truth. You can't conceive idea. You can't conceive ideas. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, make yourself always available for this review because there are a lot of portion of um, this book that as people come to review, they would be sharing their life story, 
how God helped them. Okay, how God helped them to navigate through school, to navigate through life, so that you can also learn and move through life. You understand? So the truth of the matter is, please take every portion of this book review seriously, because I just believe it's an activation. Something must come out from you. Let me listen to your song. Mm, let me listen to you. Let me use your song to climb the ladder to, to the realms of God. Let me read your article so that I can be motivated to know God more. Let me read your article on health, on health, so that I can stay healthy. This is life this, because we all need each other. I might be talking about spiritual things. Someone else will need to talk about health. And I will need to read my, you know, do, his or our own documentary about health, well-being. And she will need to read my own documentary about spiritual health. And yet, this is what this is what we call the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Someone is the head. Someone is the eyes. Someone is the nose. Someone is the mouth. And someone is the hand. When there is division, uh, I don't need the eyes. Well, you will enter a ditch even though you have a leg. I don't, I don't think I need the nose. Wow. You will not be able to smell a food at this point even though you have a mouth. So this is what we call the body of Christ. So my charge to you, even as this review continues, is that please, conceive something. Bring out something that can bless a nation. Bring out something that can bless a body. And I pray that the Lord, God of heaven, will help us in Jesus' name. You are more than this. Bring something to nothing that can change the perspective of men. It can be a creativity. Around people don't have an understanding about what nothing is. Um, in um, Yoruba movie and all of this, Nollywood have retranslated, they have misrepresented nothing. Who will go again and represent nothing? Then you conceive an idea. I can begin to do something small to, re to reorientate the community. Are you seeing that? I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Um, thank you very much, um, the editorial coordinator, Sister Kumisera. I mean, the book. Review committee, Stakumisera, those that I know, um, bro, Christian, Taiwo, Sister Olado, Jola Mide, and you know, other people that I might not know their name now. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I so much appreciate it. Your boy is grateful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I think for questions, when the questions are ready, I can begin to attend. Um, speak out, was it? Go ahead. Sister Gbim Precious. Go ahead. We are we we can you can go ahead with your question. Or you want to type it? Fine. Any other person who has a question? We'll be ready, more than ready to attend to answer them. Yes, it's that game. Is that coming here? Of course, it's that game here. Any other person? Any other? Okay, ah, it was a mistake. Okay, it's fine. Okay. Ah, uh, well, good evening, sir. I've been listening in the background, and honestly, the, the moment I remember the day I saw the flyer for the book, and immediately my spirit was fired up. I I knew that this is something that would, would stand as a a a touch, a light for so many people through their journey in school of nothing, because you would not believe it's just that people don't. I don't know if they don't have the courage to open up and talk and say this is a difficulty, this is how their journey has been going, you know, but I've spoken to several people, members, just normal nurses, year one, year two, even executives, and they're having a hard time. They're having a hard time. And I would recommend this book to everyone in Delhi who wants to receive light on how to navigate through different seasons in school, in school of nursing, because that place is not just nursing, I learn in Dale. 
if you deceive yourself to think that, oh, God just brought me here to know anatomy and physiology and medical surgical nursing, you have missed out on so much, on so, so much. So, so I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for hearing God. Thank you for yielding to God and for the discipline <laughs> of compiling this experience into an encounter for us. God bless you. God bless you, sir. I'm sure that in our, uh, our, our next sessions that we'll be having chapter two, chapter three, all through to chapter six, I think, we'll be having a lot more contributions and questions from our audience. But I think for tonight, we, we don't have any. And um, I have some questions, but I, I think I'll just keep it for, because the questions spill into chapter one. So I don't, in chapter two, I don't want us to jump. But I think that we are, we are okay for tonight. So <laughs> let's digest this one first. Hmm. Okay. All right, That's then. Fine. Yes, sir. Would you like to give us a closing remark? One, two minutes, and then we can pray. You can pray with us, sir. Bless us, and then we close. Okay. Um, the remark will be that um, choose God. Stay with him and let him work on you. It is with God, from God, in God, that everything come out from. And we can be sure that anything that come out from God will last. If it does not last, perhaps it is not from God. So I want to give us a remark that please let us stay with God. That is where we can conceive the idea. And I pray as we do that, we will receive a mind-blowing idea that we cut across generation in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we appreciate you for this time in your presence. Thank you for um, this privilege to be with you. Thank you for grace. Thank you for life. We ask upon every of your sons and daughters okay, that you, oh God, will bless us all in the name of Jesus. We ask that you in the name of Jesus. Bring up those things that are buried in us and bring them in the name of Jesus. What we are meant to sign to our generation may go leave us to talk now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, for answered prayers. Thank you because you are doing something great in FC and Southwest Zone. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.